This is a uh, demo video illustrating one of the problems. Um, this makes use of a C++ string. Uh, it also makes use of a couple of things that we talked about, a control structure using a for loop or while loop, um, as well as the uh, break and continue uh, keywords that we, uh, we learned. So the, the problem here is a, um, is a C++ string. So is there any given English string that has um, both uh, vowels and non-vowels in it and this function that you'd be writing uh, removes all of the English vowels, right? So if you have a, uh, let me illustrate this too. First of all, this is a C++ string and C++ string um, is, requires a pound include. Um, and this is the angle bracket string, right? So this is a C++ string. Okay, so C++ string could be, you know, S-T-R-I-N-G, S equals, right? C, for example. So if you do S zero, you get back a character. This is a character C, okay? Character is different, character is one byte, right? But uh, C++ string is actually 24 bytes. Anyway, but um, because this C++ string is also a class, a class has multiple methods in, in it. There's a whole bunch of stuff associated with this uh, string. First of all, C++ string is immutable, right? It's mutable. Mutable meaning you can change it. You can actually modify that string instance. This is um, true if C++ string is not a const, okay? It's not a const. So const means constant, we don't, right? But if you don't have a constant C++ string, you uh, instantiate it, let's say in this fashion, you can actually change it. You can actually uh, also do a, a s.erase, right? At certain locations, and you can actually do this in place as in s equals s dot erase this will assign the mute, muted uh, or mutated or edited or modified version of s back to it so so on and so forth um so s also has a whole bunch of other or or the string instance also has a whole bunch of other uh, methods that you can use like dot length dot s dot size right so um, there's uh, these these behaviors that you can you can invoke on uh, to ascertain the string's length, or how many characters it has. But most importantly, S can be treated as a, a, an array, right? So you learned this before uh, using a bracket notation with uh, S0 in it, for example. If S is a C, then what you come, what you get out of it is actually is an internal um, uh, characters. So this is a character, right? It's a character. And the effect is the same as calling S dot hat, right? At zero. Uh, and this will give you a character C, okay, char C. Okay, so you're not gonna get another string coming out of it. You're getting a, a, a characters out of it. Okay, so with this uh, in mind, um, what we wanna do, so let me just write this into it, um, is to have a function called uh, remove, right? Vowel, so we just had it right there. It's, uh, this is a API documentation that I already have. And it says, this one takes a string. So we're gonna do, uh, let's just say W, right? A E I O U, and put another W to it. So if you call this and try to see out this entire thing, uh, you should be getting W W. Okay, so this is what you're gonna get out of it. This is W W string, right? So this is a right C plus plus string. Okay, so you should be getting why? Because all of the vowels are excluded, right? A E I O U. This is actually U right there. Okay. So if we remove all of the vowels, we should be left with WW. So this is the outcome. Okay, so with that, uh, we've got our target function to write. This is our target function. Um, and uh, to solve this problem, we can actually do uh, either take the input string, right, as is, and just invoke the erase part, like we said here, or we can create an additional buffer starting from scratch, return value. Uh, equals no, right? This is not no, this is the empty, right? This is actually what we call an empty string, okay? Not a null string, okay? Null string is something different, right? Null string means this is not there, there is no, uh, there's only zero associated with it. But what we want to do is actually have an empty string where we actually can start concatenating, right, non vowels to it. And what we want to do is to return this right at the end. So that left with what's kind of missing right in the middle, your code right here, right? So uh, knowing that we can iterate through this uh, string, just like an array, uh, we can actually set up our for statement, right? So in a in a for loop, right, we talked about 
uh, this thing having three key compartments, right? First of all, is the initialization. So initialization typically involves, you know, a variable. Uh, we usually just use I, and then there is a condition, right? So this condition is a true or false. As long as I is less than size of string. So if we're giving this W A I O U W, then we have seven. So this S dot size actually returns seven. And this is cool because we only need to iterate this uh, um, this string through seven times, and being that array indexing start with zero, right? So you want to do i less than s dot size to have this done seven times, i plus plus like we said before with the increment. Uh, this allows us to write another selection criteria in it. So if right a uh, our very first s i right s i, if this guy right is i. Uh, I'm sorry, is A, E, I, O, U, uh, either of those, we can bypass them, right? So to do that, and the reason if you don't bypass them, uh, you'll be concatenating into this art, this return value, which is incorrect. So let's just write this out, checking to see if this is A, right? And because now we've got five of these, so let me just quickly, you know, go through this and modify this A, E, right? I, O, U. Okay, so what is this doing is it's checking to see if any of these uh, characters at the ith location inside a string is the is a vowel, right? So if this is a or right, if this is e, right, or if this is i or this o, so you guys get the idea. What do we do? We continue. We do not want to, um, the rest of the code to be executed. Uh, alternatively, you can have if else, right, like this where return val would be then plus equals, right? S I. Now, uh, this is very important. Concatenation in string, if you have, you know, C, and then you add plus plus to it, in string, you, you actually get, in C plus plus, you get C plus plus, okay? Uh, this plus sign is very important. This is the overloaded um, functions in C, C plus plus. So this allows you to concatenate, right, using this. Or the other way of doing things is do s.concat, right? So there are other methods that you can call to basically get the same fact. So this is a shorthand in concatenating or adding uh, substrings together to get a string. So your return string is the return val, right, that you want to return. That'll give you um, the end result, which is a collection of non-vowels, right? So if there is a vowel, continue. If, if s i is a vowel right then continue bypassing it now because this continue uh, automatically uh, advances to the next iteration uh, foregoing the following logic uh, you don't really need this else anymore right so you can pretty much just have it like this so hopefully it makes sense right and because this continues then there's only one line here you can get rid of this pretty braces as well like i said before you know if there is a to make it simple right so you don't have to have a lot of these curly braces, but together the bulk of your logic is inside this for loop. Okay, so let's do a quick um, um, illustrations and uh, see if this actually works. Okay, now um, you see that there is only WW return. Uh, you can change this all you want. So by eliminating a W in front and by eliminating all of the um, the vowels, uh, you should be getting back a W in this case, okay? Yep, all right. Um, if you're using an online ID, sometimes it takes a little while, but um, you guys get the idea. So hopefully this illustrates the use of your for loop uh, to solve a C++ stream manipulation problem. 